Residents of Old Fadama have been compelled to sleep in the open at night after fire swept through their homes. Our reporter Joseph Armstrong was at the community and filed this report. This is the access road to Old Fadama where the fire swept through the buildings here. Currently, you can see people who used to stay here are no longer here because they can no longer sleep here, but looking from that distance, uh, some people who are uh, seated, let's find out from them if they are the occupants of these buildings that has been destroyed by the fire. Uh, what was that design? Okay. okay. So I'll talk to a few of them and then find out why they are sitting here and they are refusing to go find a place to sleep. Now, uh, Papa, it is a... Actually, you, have a you speak English? Yeah, I can speak English. Okay. So why, why are you here? Because I don't have any place to go. Because mm. I'm sleeping here. Do you have your room anywhere here? Yeah. Where? Yes, here, yeah, inside here. Oh, okay, so that, that is your room. Yes, also sir. destroyed. Do you have any friends you can go and hang around with? I don't with? have any friends. No. I don't have any Where are you from? Where are you coming from? I'm coming from Northern region. Which part of Northern region? Pandai. Pandai. Yeah. And then you don't have any other place? Pandai. Okay, so I, I can see a lady here too. Let me talk to this lady too and find out. Now, you two, where are you from? Um. Pardon? Yendi. You are from Yendi? Yes. Oh, okay. So, um, tell me, where will you be sleeping? Where are you? I don't know. Now, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Where are you doing? Right, that, that's uh, our reporter Joseph Armstrong reporting there from Old Fadaba. And I'm sure you may be aware of a fire that swept through some parts of uh, slums in Achimota near the Achimota Old Station, which uh, caused a lot of loss of properties. I, I've been joined in the studio by uh, Michael Walter Okai, who is uh, the assistant station officer at the National Fire Service headquarters, a PR department. Uh, we're gr grateful to have you. A very quick one. I know that in times like these, uh, our key preoccupation should be how to reduce the incidence of fires because we are in the Hamilton, the dry season. What's happening in Australia is a typical example we can learn from. So what should be our general responses as citizens to uh, uh, stop the incidence? of fire in fact I uh, thanks for having me uh, well, what I would say is that the general public should be very careful uh, with with the hamatans around like I said in the morning uh, our education team is on we are still educating the general public we are going to the markets we are going to the lorry parks we are going to the schools and then we are going to the churches they should only adhere to some of the regulations of the do's and don'ts we put and out what there. are the regulations so, of do's and don'ts can you share some with us yes. mean, because as far as i know ordinary person sometimes when we see fire we try to tackle the fire and we do so wrongly we end up escalating the situation uh, that is that has always been the problem if you if you've not been trained as to how to use the fire extinguisher Please, anytime the fires come, just call the Ghana National Fire Service on 192. You understand? Call the fire service on 192. Please don't call the radio stations or the television stations. They only put and it say on my house air. is burning. And, oh, yes, my exactly. <laughs> you see, they put it on air. They don't call the fire service. You understand? And you know the number of radio and television stations we have in the country. So what if the firemen are not listening to that particular radio or watching that television station? So just call us on 192. And, and you don't waste time. You don't try to play the not hero at not and at tackle don't the fire. The but you know what's happening in Australia brings to the fore the challenges that affect uh, fire operators, uh, fire service, firefighters all over the world in terms of logistics and capability. One of the questions many people have had against the National Fire Service always is that you respond too slow to fires and when you're called you come in and sometimes you don't have water in your in your tenders and you know your general response time is unimpressive is is this a claim that you acknowledge is no, is fair no not at all in fact the general public has not been fair to us mostly we have complained about in fact i was just talking about people calling the radio stations instead of the 
a fire One service. Nine, two. You understand? Yes, they, they tell you we've, we've called the fire service on several occasions. Personally, I've had that encounter with someone before. I went to some a place where there was fire, and then they said, oh, they've called the fire service on several occasions. Meanwhile, I drew closer to someone, asked him, which number do you, did you call to the fire service? He said, oh, we called so so and so FM station. You see, when you call the FM stations, they don't call fire service. They put it on air. Yesterday, I was on a sister station in the morning when uh, uh, they called to report that of the Achimota fire. You understand? Initially, the call that came said the fire was at Gulf City. And then another call came and said, no, it's not Gulf, uh, Gulf Club, but rather uh, the Achimota overhead place. It, sometimes these are, these are challenges. Confused Even if you call the fire service, giving us vivid directions to where the fire scene is, becomes a problem. So we your one, learn to be responsible, make Very sure that we keep yes. our uh, surroundings clear of any things that will cause fire. Yes, yes. When there is a fire, don't play hero. Call uh, fire service one nine two. Exactly, uh, Ms. Okai. We're grateful that we could have you for a short time, uh, Mr. Uh, Michael Walter Okai is assistant fire station officer at the Ghana National Fire Service headquarters, the PR department.